Myelotus Plastic Syndrome, Wikipedia Article Audio Myelotus Plastic Syndromes are a group of cancers in which immature blood cells in the bone marrow do not mature and therefore do not become healthy blood cells. Early on there are typically no symptoms. Later symptoms may include feeling tired, shortness of breath, easy bleeding, or frequent infections. Some types may develop into acute myeloid leukemia. Signs and Symptoms Cause Pathophysiology Genetics 5Q Syndrome Splicing Factor Mutations IDH1 and IDH2 Mutations Diagnosis Differential Diagnosis Classification French-American-British Classification World Health Organization Myelotus Plastic Syndrome Unclassified Management Iron Levels Prognosis Genetic Markers Epidemiology History Notable Cases Risk factors include previous chemotherapy or radiation therapy, exposure to certain chemicals such as tobacco smoke, pesticides, and benzene, and exposure to heavy metals such as mercury or lead. Problems with blood cell formation result in some combination of low red blood cells, low platelets, and low white blood cells. Some types have an increase in immature blood cells called blasts, in the bone marrow or blood. The types of MDS are based on specific changes in the blood cells and bone marrow. Treatments may include supportive care, drug therapy, and stem cell transplantation. Supportive care may include blood transfusions, medications to increase the making of red blood cells, and antibiotics. Drug therapy may include the medication lenalidomide, antithymocyte globulin, and azacitidine. Certain people can be cured with chemotherapy followed by a stem cell transplant from a donor. About 7 per 100,000 people are affected with about 4 per 100,000 people newly acquiring the condition each year. The typical age of onset is 70 years. The outlook depends on the type of cells affected, the number of blasts in the bone marrow or blood, and the changes present in the chromosomes of the affected cells. The typical survival rate following diagnosis is 2.5 years. The conditions were first recognized in the early 1900s. The current name came into use in 1976. Signs and symptoms are nonspecific and generally related to the blood cytopenias. Many individuals are asymptomatic, and blood cytopenia or other problems are identified as a part of a routine blood count. Although some risk exists for developing acute myelogenous leukemia, about 50% of deaths occur as a result of bleeding or infection. However, Leukemia that occurs as a result of myelodysplasia is notoriously resistant to treatment. Anemia dominates the early course. Most symptomatic patients complain of the gradual onset of fatigue and weakness, dyspnea, and pallor, but at least half the patients are asymptomatic and their MDS is discovered only incidentally on routine blood counts. Previous chemotherapy or radiation exposure is an important fact in the person's medical history. Fever and weight loss should point to a myeloproliferative rather than myelodysplastic process. Some people have a history of exposure to chemotherapy or radiation, or both. Workers in some industries with heavy exposure to hydrocarbons such as the petroleum industry have a slightly higher risk of contracting the disease than the general population.
Xylene and benzene exposure has been associated with myelodysplasia. Vietnam veterans exposed to Agent Orange are at risk of developing MDS. A link may exist between the development of MDS in atomic bomb survivors 40 to 60 years after radiation exposure. Children with Down syndrome are susceptible to MDS and a family history may indicate a hereditary form of sideroblastic anemia or Fanconi anemia. MDS most often develops without an identifiable cause. Risk factors include exposure to an agent known to cause DNA damage, like radiation, benzene, and certain chemotherapies. Other risk factors have been inconsistently reported. It can be difficult to prove a connection between a suspected exposure and the development of MDS, but the presence of genetic abnormalities may provide some supportive information. Secondary MDS can occur as a late toxicity of cancer therapy. MDS after exposure to radiation or alkylating agents such as busulfan, nitrosourea, or procarbazine, typically occurs three to seven years after exposure and frequently demonstrates loss of chromosome 5 or 7. MDS after exposure to DNA topoisomerase 2 inhibitors occurs after a shorter latency of only one to three years and can have a 11Q23 translocation. Other pre-existing bone marrow disorders like acquired aplastic anemia following immunosuppressive treatment and Fanconi anemia can evolve into MDS. MDS is thought to arise from mutations in the multipotent bone marrow stem cell, but the specific defects responsible for these diseases remain poorly understood. Differentiation of blood precursor cells is impaired and a significant increase in levels of apoptotic cell death occurs in bone marrow cells. Clonal expansion of the abnormal cells results in the production of cells which have lost the ability to differentiate. If the overall percentage of bone marrow myeloblasts rises over a particular cutoff, then transformation to acute myelogenous leukemia is said to have occurred. The progression of MDS to AML is a good example of the multi-step theory of carcinogenesis in which a series of mutations occurs in an initially normal cell and transforms it into a cancer cell. While recognition of leukemic transformation was historically important, a significant proportion of the morbidity and mortality attributable to MDS results not from transformation to AML but rather from the cytopenias seen in all MDS patients. While anemia is the most common cytopenia in MDS patients, given the ready availability of blood transfusion, MDS patients rarely suffer injury from severe anemia. The two most serious complications in MDS patients resulting from their cytopenias are bleeding or infection. Long-term transfusion of packed red blood cells leads to iron overload. The recognition of epigenetic changes in DNA structure in MDS has explained the success of two of three commercially available medications approved by the U.S. Food and Drug Administration to treat MDS. Proper DNA methylation is critical in the regulation of proliferation genes and the loss of DNA methylation control can lead to uncontrolled cell growth and cytopenias. The recently approved DNA methyltransferase inhibitors take advantage of this mechanism by creating a more orderly DNA methylation profile in the hematopoietic stem cell nucleus, and thereby restoring normal blood counts and retarding the progression of MDS to acute leukemia. Some authors have proposed that the loss of mitochondrial function over time leads to the accumulation of DNA mutations in hematopoietic stem cells, and this accounts for the increased incidence of MDS in older patients. Researchers point to the accumulation of mitochondrial iron deposits in the ringed cider oblast as evidence of mitochondrial dysfunction in MDS. Since at least 1974, 
the deletion in the long arm of chromosome 5 has been known to be associated with dysplastic abnormalities of hematopoietic stem cells. By 2005, lenalidomide, a chemotherapy drug, was recognized to be effective in MDS patients with the 5Q syndrome, and in December 2005, the US FDA approved the drug for this indication. Patients with isolated 5Q, low IPSS risk, and transfusion dependence respond best to lenalidomide. Typically, prognosis for these patients is favorable, with a 63-month median survival. Lenalidomide has dual action, by lowering the malignant clone number in patients with 5Q, and by inducing better differentiation of healthy erythroid cells, as seen in patients without 5Q deletion. Mutations and splicing factors have been found in 40-80% of cases with myelodysplastic syndrome, particularly in those with ringed sideroblasts. Mutations in the genes encoding for isocitrate dehydrogenase 1 and 2 occur in 10 to 20% of patients with myelodysplastic syndrome, and confer a worsened prognosis in low-risk MDS. Because the incidence of IDH1-2 mutations increases as the disease malignancy increases, these findings together suggest that IDH1-2 mutations are important drivers of progression of MDS to a more malignant disease state. The elimination of other causes of cytopenias, along with a dysplastic bone marrow, is required to diagnose a myelodysplastic syndrome, so differentiating MDS from anemia, thrombocytopenia and leukopenia is important. A typical diagnostic investigation includes The features generally used to define a MDS are blood cytopenias, ineffective hematopoiesis, dyserythropoiesis, dysgranulopoiesis, dysmegacaropoiesis, and increased myeloblasts. Dysplasia can affect all three lineages seen in the bone marrow. The best way to diagnose dysplasia is by morphology and special stains used on the bone marrow aspirate and peripheral blood smear. Dysplasia in the myeloid series is defined by Other stains can help in special cases in eosinophils is a marker of abnormality seen in chronic eosinophilic leukemia and is a sign of aberrancy. On the bone marrow biopsy High-grade dysplasia may show atypical localization of immature precursors which are islands of immature precursors cells localized to the center of the intertrabecular space rather than adjacent to the trabeculae or surrounding arterioles. This morphology can be difficult to differentiate from treated leukemia and recovering immature normal marrow elements. Also topographic alteration of the nucleated erythroid cells can be seen in early myelodysplasia, where normoblasts are seen next to bony trabeculae instead of forming normal interstitially placed erythroid islands. Myelodysplasia is a diagnosis of exclusion and must be made after proper determination of iron stores, vitamin deficiencies, and nutrient deficiencies are ruled out. Also. Congenital diseases such as congenital dyserythropoietic anemia have been recognized, Pearson's syndrome, Jordan's anomaly, vacuolization in all cell lines may be seen in Chenarin-Dorfman syndrome, aminolavulinic acid enzyme deficiency, and other more esoteric enzyme deficiencies are known to give a pseudomyelodysplastic picture in one of the cell lines, however, all three cell lines are never morphologically dysplastic in these entities with the exception of chloramphenicol, arsenic, toxicity, and other poisons. All of these conditions are characterized by abnormalities in the production of one or more of the cellular components of blood. In 1974 and 1975, a group of pathologists from France, the U.S. 
and Britain produced the first widely used classification of these diseases. This French-American-British classification was published in 1976, and revised in 1982. It was used by pathologists and clinicians for almost 20 years. Cases were classified into five categories. The best prognosis is seen with RA and RARS, where some non-transplant patients live more than a decade. The worst outlook is with RAEBT, where the mean life expectancy is less than one year. About one quarter of patients develop overt leukemia. The others die of complications of low blood count or unrelated disease. The International Prognostic Scoring System is another tool for determining the prognosis of MDS, published in Blood in 1997. This system takes into account the percentage of blasts in the marrow, cytogenetics, and number of cytopenias. In the late 1990s, a group of pathologists and clinicians working under the World Health Organization modified this classification, introducing several new disease categories and eliminating others. Most recently, the WHO has evolved a new classification scheme which is based more on genetic findings. However, morphology of the cells in the peripheral blood, bone marrow aspirate, and bone marrow biopsy are still the screening tests used to decide which classification is best and which cytogenetic aberrations may be related. Anemia Chronic tiredness, shortness of breath, chilled sensation, sometimes chest pain, neutropenia, increased susceptibility to infection, thrombocytopenia, increased susceptibility to bleeding and ecchymosis, as well as subcutaneous hemorrhaging resulting in purpura or petechiae. Neutropenia, anemia, and thrombocytopenia, splenomegaly or rarely hepatomegaly, abnormal granules in cells, abnormal nuclear shape and size, chromosome abnormality, including chromosomal translocations and abnormal chromosome number. Full blood count and examination of blood film, the blood film morphology can provide clues about hemolytic anemia, clumping of the platelets leading to spurious thrombocytopenia, or leukemia blood tests to eliminate other common causes of cytopenias, such as lupus, hepatitis, B12, folate, or other vitamin deficiencies, renal failure or heart failure, HIV, hemolytic anemia, monoclonal gammopathy, age-appropriate cancer screening should be considered for all anemic patients, bone marrow. Examination by a hematopathologist, this is required to establish the diagnosis, since all hematopathologists consider dysplastic marrow the key feature of myelodysplasia, cytogenetics or chromosomal studies, this is ideally performed on the bone marrow aspirate. Conventional cytogenetics require a fresh specimen since live cells are induced to enter metaphase to allow chromosomes to be seen, interphase fluorescence in situ hybridization testing, usually ordered together with conventional cytogenetic testing, offers rapid detection of several chromosome abnormalities associated with MDS, including DEL5Q, minus 7, plus 8, and DEL20Q. Virtual karyotyping can be done for MDS, which uses computational tools to construct the karyogram from disrupted DNA. Virtual karyotyping does not require cell culture and has dramatically higher resolution than conventional cytogenetics, but cannot detect balanced translocations. Flow cytometry is helpful to establish the presence of any lymphoproliferative disorder in the marrow. Testing for copper deficiency should not be overlooked, as it can morphologically resemble MDS in bone marrow biopsies. Granulocytic series, hypersegmented neutrophils, 
hyposegmented neutrophils, hypogranular neutrophils or pseudochediac higashi, our rods, automatically RAEB2, also note our rods may be seen in mature neutrophils in AML with translocation T, dimorphic granules within eosinophils, erythroid series, binucleate erythroid percursors and karyorexis, erythroid nuclear budding, erythroid nuclear strings or internuclear bridging, loss of e cadherin in normoblasts is a sign of aberrancy, periodic acid. Shift within erythroid precursors in the bone marrow aspirate. Note, one can see PA vacuolar positivity in L1 and L2 blasts, ringed cytoroblasts seen on Prussian blue iron stain, megakaryocytic series, hyposegmented nuclear features in platelet producing megakaryocytes, hypersegmented megakaryocytes, ballooning of the platelets. Rare cases with less than 5% blast will present with our rods. These cases usually have the features of RAMD, occasionally, cases of MDS present with isolated neutropenia or thrombocytopenia without anemia and with dysplastic changes confined to the single lineage. The term refractory neutropenia and refractory thrombocytopenia have sometimes been used to describe these cases. A diagnosis of MDS in patients with neutropenia or thrombocytopenia without anemia should be made with caution, patients with RA or RAEB occasionally present with leukocytosis or thrombocytosis instead of the usual cytopenia. Good, normal, Y, del, del, intermediate or variable, plus 8, other single or double anomalies, poor, complex, chromosome 7 anomalies. The list of dysplastic syndromes under the new WHO system includes 5Q syndrome, typically seen in older women with normal or high platelet counts and isolated deletions of the long arm of chromosome 5 in bone marrow cells, was added to the classification. Note. Not all physicians concur with this reclassification, because the underlying pathology of this disease is not well understood. The WHO has proposed a criterion for diagnosis and classification of MDS that may apply to most cases. However, occasional cases are difficult to classify into defined categories because of one or more unusual features. The goals of therapy are to control symptoms, improve quality of life, improve overall survival, and decrease progression to AML. The IPSS scoring system can help triage patients for more aggressive treatment as well as help determine the best timing of this therapy. Supportive care with blood products and hematopoietic growth factors is the mainstay of therapy. The regulatory environment for the use of erythropoietins is evolving, according to a recent U.S. Medicare national coverage determination. No comment on the use of hematopoietic growth factors for MDS was made in that document though. Three agents have been approved by the FDA for the treatment of MDS. Chemotherapy with the hypomethylating agents 5-azacetidin and desitabine has been shown to decrease blood transfusion requirements and to retard the progression of MDS to AML. Lenalidomide was approved by the FDA in December 2005 only for use in the 5Q syndrome. In the United States, Treatment of MDS with lenalidomide costs about $9,200 per month. Stem cell transplantation, particularly in younger and more severely affected patients, offers the potential for curative therapy. Success of bone marrow transplantation has been found to correlate with severity of MDS as determined by the IPSS score with patients having a more favorable IPSS score tending to have a more favorable outcome with transplantation.
Iron overload can develop in MDS as a result of the RBC transfusions which are a major part of the supportive care for anemic MDS patients. Although the specific therapies patients receive may alleviate the RBC transfusion need in some cases, many MDS patients may not respond to these treatments, thus may develop iron overload from repeated RBC transfusions. Patients requiring relatively large numbers of RBC transfusions can experience the adverse effect of chronic iron overload on their liver, heart, and endocrine functions. The resulting organ dysfunction from transfusional iron overload might be a contributor to increased illness and death in early stage MDS. For patients requiring many RBC transfusions, serum ferritin levels, number of RBC transfusions received, and associated organ dysfunction should be monitored to determine iron levels. Monitoring serum ferritin may also be useful, aiming to decrease ferritin levels to 1000 g l. Currently, two iron chelators are available in the US, defiroxamine for intravenous use and defirozyrox for oral use. These options now provide potentially useful drugs for treating this iron overload problem. A third chelating agent is available in Europe, deferry prone for oral use, but not available in the US. Clinical trials in the MDS are ongoing with iron chelating agents to address the question of whether iron chelation alters the natural history of patients with MDS who are transfusion dependent. Reversal of some of the consequences of iron overload in MDS by iron chelation therapy have been shown. Both the MDS Foundation and the National Comprehensive Cancer Network MDS Guidelines Panel have recommended that chelation therapy be considered to decrease iron overload in selected MDS patients. Evidence also suggests a potential value exists to iron chelation in patients who will undergo a stem cell transplant. Although Defirazirox is generally well tolerated, recently a safety warning by the FDA and Novartis was added to Defirazirox treatment guidelines. Following post-marketing use of Defirazirox, rare cases of acute kidney failure or liver failure occurred some resulting in death. Due to this, patients should be closely monitored on Defirazirox therapy prior to the start of therapy and regularly thereafter. The outlook in MDS is variable, with about 30% of patients progressing to refractory AML. The median survival rate varies from years to months, depending on type. Stem cell transplantation offers possible cure, with survival rates of 50% at 3 years, although older patients do poorly. Indicators of a good prognosis, younger age, normal or moderately reduced neutrophil or platelet counts, low blast counts in the bone marrow and no blasts in the blood, no hour rods, ringed cider oblasts normal or mixed karyotypes without complex chromosome abnormalities, and in vitro marrow culture with a non-leukemic growth pattern. Indicators of a poor prognosis, advanced age, severe neutropenia or thrombocytopenia, high blast count in the bone marrow or blasts in the blood, hour rods, absence of ringed cider oblasts, abnormal localization or immature granulocyte precursors in bone marrow section, completely or mostly abnormal karyotypes, or complex marrow chromosome abnormalities and in vitro bone marrow culture with a leukemic growth pattern. Karyotype Prognostic Factors The IPSS is the most commonly used tool in MDS to predict long-term outcome. Cytogenetic abnormalities can be detected by conventional cytogenetics, a fish panel for MDS, or virtual karyotype. 
Although not yet formally incorporated in the generally accepted classification systems, molecular profiling of myelodysplastic syndrome genomes has increased the understanding of prognostic molecular factors for this disease. For example, in low-risk MDS, IDH1 and IDH2 mutations are associated with significantly worsened survival. The exact number of people with MDS is not known because it can go undiagnosed and no tracking of the syndrome is mandated. Some estimates are on the order of 10,000 to 20,000 new cases each year in the United States alone. The number of new cases each year is probably increasing as the age of the population increases and some authors propose that the number of new cases in those over 70 may be as high as 15 per 100,000 per year. The typical age at diagnosis of MDS is between 60 and 75 years, a few people are younger than 50, and diagnoses are rare in children. Males are slightly more commonly affected than females. Since the early 20th century, some people with acute myelogenous leukemia were begun to be recognized to have a preceding period of anemia and abnormal blood cell production. These conditions were lumped together with other diseases under the term refractory anemia. The first description of pre-leukemia as a specific entity was published in 1953 by Block ETL. The early identification, characterization, and classification of this disorder were problematical, and the syndrome went by many names until the 1976 FAB classification was published and popularized the term MDS. <laughs>